My name is David Kim. I'm a radiation oncologist here at Logansport Memorial Hospital. Um, I was born in Louisville, Kentucky, grew up in a small town in Middle Tennessee. I uh, attended college at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia where I majored in biophysics. Um, from there I moved a little bit further north to New Haven, Connecticut where I attended medical school at Yale University. I completed my internal medicine internship at Yale New Haven Hospital and then stayed on for my radiation oncology residency at Yale. Um, I stayed on faculty at the medical school there for a couple of years before moving back south to be nearer my parents. Um, for the past 21 years or so, I've been practicing down in Evansville, Indiana, and then uh, a few months ago moved uh, to this area with my family and started working here at Logansport about three months ago. With new patients that I see, I like to spend a fair amount of time getting to know the individual and family members if they're there. Um, what you would expect is for me to review the detailed history of your presentation of, of cancer and do a brief physical examination. And then uh, I would spend a fair amount of time discussing the type of cancer that you have, the natural history of that cancer, different options for management, and in particular I would be focusing on the use of radiation when it's needed, how radiation is given, what it is, uh, spending a fair amount of time focusing on potential side effects, both short-term and potential long-term side effects, to give you all the information that you might need to uh, make a decision as to what you would like to do. Then, if radiation is decided on as part of the treatment program, you would be brought in and undergo a CT scan here in the hospital. Uh, we call it a CT simulation. It's not a diagnostic scan, but a treatment planning scan that is specifically used by our department and our physicists to plan radiation treatments. After the CT simulation, I work behind the scenes with our dosimetrist and our physicist to design the unique uh, uh, treatment plan for your specific need. And typically two to four days after the CT simulation is when the first radiation treatment would be given. Um, during the course of radiation, I typically would sit down with patients and their family members once per week uh, during the treatment course and deal with any potential side effects and uh, answer any questions that may come up and deal with any new medical issues that arise during the treatment course. Ordinarily, after treatments are finished, I would see that patient back about one month um, post-radiation and then every few months thereafter for uh, generally uh, up to five years. In the old days when a patient developed cancer spread to the brain, also known as brain metastases, almost all patients rec would receive what's called whole brain radiotherapy. And in, in, in that scenario, the entire brain volume would be treated with x-rays from the left and right side, and it would encompass the entire brain volume, regardless of how, how small the, the lesion in the brain was. Um, uh, years ago, technology uh, wasn't as advanced, and computers weren't as powerful as they are now, and really that was the only treatment that we could give for when cancer spread into the brain. It's effective, however, in addition to treating the cancer that's in maybe just a small portion of the brain, you would end up having to treat the entire brain volume. And in the majority of patients, if uh, they live long enough, that would result in a number of potential, uh, potential toxicities down the road, um, you know, uh, one of them being neurocognitive deficits, memory loss, sometimes loss of balance, effectively you know, looking like early dementia in some cases. So whole brain radiotherapy, while sometimes it's indicated and sometimes it is needed, over the past probably five to maybe going on 10 years uh, across the country and around the world, a, a push has been uh, made towards 
minimizing uh, the use of whole brain radiotherapy and, ins and instead focusing on very focal radiation treatments so as to avoid the, the uh, added toxicity of treating the entire brain volume when it might not be needed. So radiosurgery is used to precisely focus radiation treatments just to the area where the cancer is involving and uh, thus minimizing dose to the rest of the normal brain tissue. There are different ways of administering radiosurgery. There are different uh, platforms that are used, different types of linear accelerators are used. The vast majority of radiosurgical treatments are designed to treat one lesion, one spot. So um, the process is a patient would get an MRI of the brain and a CT simulation. We would fuse those images together and use the MRI to help draw the volume of tissue that we want to treat. Then with the aid, uh, help of a physicist and a dosimetrist, uh, we would devise a radiation treatment plan very specific for treating that particular lesion in that particular brain. The treatment planning process is a little bit cumbersome, takes some time, um, and once the treatment plan has been generated, we would bring the patient to the department, put them on the uh, treatment table, affix them to the table with our immobilization devices, and then begin the treatments. Typically, um, uh, a patient would lie on the table for roughly about 20 to 30 minutes to treat one lesion within the brain using standard uh, radiosurgical techniques. And the majority of institutions in this area and in Indianapolis use very standard uh, linear accelerator-based radiosurgery, just as I've described. HyperArc is a type of radiosurgery that was developed by Varian Medical Systems. And um, there are several advantages to using hyperarc radiosurgery over standard linear accelerator-based radiosurgery. Um, one of the uh, initial, one of the advantages is that the treatment planning time, I think, is significantly uh, reduced. Um, there's a little bit more automation um, with the treatment planning, uh, so the physicist and dosimetrist don't have to spend quite as much time with trial and error trying to figure out what are the best angles to approach the spot in the brain to avoid the eye or the optic nerve or other structures within within the head. With the hyperarc planning system, much of that is automated and um, it makes planning faster and thus patients can get to the treatment a little bit quicker. Now, once on the treatment table, using the hyperarc system, um, as compared to standard linear accelerator-based radiosurgery, the treatment is much, much quicker. Um, it is uh, basically a you know, one-button type of solution where once we get you set up and, and get you placed in the correct position, we get the treatment started and everything is automated. So uh, what you would experience is the linear accelerator rotating around the head and treating as it's rotating around that fixed point where it's treating and then the table where the patient is lying might rotate a little bit and then there's another rotation around the head an arc treatment and it may rotate again and there's another treatment uh, with the arcs. With the hyper arc solution those treatments take about roughly 10 to 15 minutes Using standard linear accelerator based uh, radiosurgery, those treatments take roughly 25 to 30 minutes. Um, uh, so the hyperarc is much quicker, uh, uh, comparatively speaking. Additionally, with standard radiosurgical, linear accelerator based radiosurgical treatments, if you have more than one brain metastasis that you have to treat, then you have to plan each of these treatments individually. And so if someone, for example, had four metastatic lesions that we wanted to treat with radiosurgery, um, they all have to be treated sequentially, one after the other. And so if you wanted to finish the entire treatment in one day, it would take about 30 minutes for the first lesion, then you reset up the patient and another 30 minutes for the next one, and then so on and so forth. So it could take up to two hours lying on the table, completely immobilized, completely still, 
to complete radiosurgical treatments for four separate brain metastases. That's oftentimes not feasible. Um, the department schedules sometimes won't allow that long of a treatment from one individual. There's just people scheduled throughout the day that it, it just won't allow it. And in other individuals, uh, they just can't tolerate lying under a tight mask for, for an hour or, or more at one session. You know, many of these people have metastatic disease, they're older, they have a, a lot of weight loss, and lying on that hard treatment table completely still with their spine on that table is just not feasible for many patients to do. It's very uncomfortable even if, if, they, if they were able to do it. The hyperarch uh, treatment, radiosurgical treatment, um, eliminates the need for, for those long treatments. And so with the hyperarch planning, uh, we plan from what we call one isocenter. So we place the patient right at the position we want them to be, and as the beam is rotating around the patient and at the different angles, it's treating all four lesions at the same time. Uh, it's not sequential treatment. So four treatments, four lesions could be treated within less than 10 minutes as opposed to two plus hours. Oftentimes with standard radiosurgical uh, treatments, uh, oftentimes with uh, linear, standard linear accelerator based radiosurgical treatments, if you have four more lesions you have to break up those treatments into multiple days, two, three, four days separated, separated by days. So it prolongs the treatment time additionally and it increases the cost because the more times you come in, the more expensive it is. So we can get patients to the treatment table faster. The treatment itself is significantly faster than standard radiosurgical treatments which improves patient comfort, reduces the risk for error as the patient has less time to be moving around on the table. Uh, it's much more convenient to the patient and there's much less cost. Um, so there are many advantages with the HyperArc radiosurgical platform that I think are just really fantastic. I would also say that um, the HyperArc radiosurgery platform is fairly new. I think it came out for commercial use maybe about five or six years ago. And as far as I know, uh, Logansport Memorial Hospital is the only hospital for sure in the region. And uh, I think even including Indianapolis, I think we are the uh, only center using HyperArc, to the best of my knowledge. Um, radiosurgery isn't for every patient who has cancer in the brain. Um, it's mostly used in patients who have cancer that has metastasized or spread to the brain, um, where there are uh, small lesions scattered throughout the brain uh, of a limited number, four, five, maybe six spots. Some centers would treat more, uh, but the more lesions there are, if there are 15 or 20 lesions, it almost becomes a whole brain radiation treatment. So really it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to use radiosurgery uh, in, in patients that have innumerable brain metastases. Those patients are best suited for the regular whole brain radiation treatments. Um, Hyperarch is not used for patients with uh, cancers that originate in the brain, like uh, uh, that are called gliomas. Um, those are best treated with more standard fractionated radiation therapy treatments over five or six weeks. HyperArc is, is a standalone treatment and one treatment typically is given. Now after the treatments, that patient would be monitored with um, serial imaging of the brain with MRI scans or CT scans to monitor for other metastases that might show up. And if something shows up, then those lesions typically can be treated with HyperArc radiosurgery um, at that time. Um, so typically there's no follow-up treatments after the one session with HyperArc. One of the benefits of radiosurgery is that you are treating such a small volume of the brain uh, with radiation because the treatments are so focal, so localized, and so precise we might treat with maybe just one millimeter of margin around the brain metastasis. So 
the uh, rest of the normal brain that doesn't have cancer in it gets very little dose of radiation. So the beauty of radiosurgery is that it's given typically with minimal to no side effects. Sometimes after the uh, treatment, because it's a pretty large dose that we give with one treatment, um, an individual can develop some edema in the brain after the treatments, and that's why we typically have them on uh, steroid medications during the treatment during the treatment, and then taper them slowly off of the steroids over two or three weeks. The steroids keeps the swelling down, and so when we have an individual on stero a steroid taper over a few weeks, uh, it keeps the swelling down in the post-treatment setting, um, such that they don't they don't develop any symptoms such as headache or some other neurologic symptom. Um, so most patients that we treat with hyperarc, they don't have any uh, treatment related side effects. You don't lose your hair, there's no pain, there's no sensation when the treatment is being given even though it's called radiosurgery. There's no anesthesia, no IVs, no cutting, there's no dietary requirements or restrictions. You can eat before the treatment or you don't have to. All you have to do is show up and lie still on your back for about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, you also have to wear a very tight aquaplast mask which is individually made for every uh, patient who gets treated with radiosurgery with a hyperarc system. These, uh, this yellow material here, which is solid now, is actually, they come in sheets, flat sheets like a piece of paper and they're solid and hard but when you put them in a hot water bath it becomes malleable and so we get you placed on the treatment table on your back and then when it's hot and malleable these sheets are pulled over the face and they're formed to your shape of your forehead and your chin and the back of your head and these become your individual mask um, in which you have to, to lie as the treatments are being given and it keeps your head in a uh, stable, immovable uh, position such that we can be extremely accurate with the treatments. So hyperarc is used only in the brain. And it's a very precise, focal, localized treatment meant to treat a very small volume of tissue without giving much dose at all to the surrounding normal tissues. There are other uh, uh, solu technological solutions for the same type of treatment in other parts of the body. One of the other new technologies that we've started here at Logan Sport over the past couple of months is stereotactic body radiotherapy, and uh, in particular lung SBRT. So that is using a very similar type of technology, although it is not hyperarch at all, but it's a similar principle of treatment where um, we can very precisely treat very uh, treat small lesions that are confined to the lung to very high doses in a very short period of time, um, uh, which makes these treatments extremely effective at curing early stage lung cancers. Probably fairly equivalent to the cure rates of removing the entire lobe of the lung. Um, those treatments also are given in in. Uh, a very a very short period of time, typically over um, five treatments, as opposed to one treatment with a hyperarc, and typically are given with minimal to no side effects, and are it's another new technology that we brought to Logan Sport to bring to the community. Um, previously, individuals with brain metastases that required radiosurgery or small primary lung cancers that required stereotactic body radiotherapy, we had to refer them out to surrounding facilities that had these capacities. Now we don't need to do that. Patients can be treated here in Logansport with the same technology, the same precision, on a linear accelerator that's brand new and state of the art, and receive the exact same care that you would get if you were to travel in Indianapolis or Cincinnati or other larger cities, Chicago, etc.